Okay, hi everybody. Um, today I just want to show the um, the flux on a permanent magnet. How the flux on the permanent magnet um, needs to be um, altered in some way uh, in the in the sense of the Floyd Sweet VTA to induce an EMF into a coil. <coughs> Here I have two um, six by four by half inch permanent magnets. Um, the field strength. Um, I've got a north pole here and a south pole here, so the flux is bent over like this. Um, now, across the face of the magnet, the flux is fairly uniform. Um, so what I want to show first of all is that if I move this coil across the face of the permanent magnet, even though there is a flux cutting and the coil was cutting the flux, being that the flux is uniform from the face of the permanent magnet, there's nearly no EMF um, induced in the coil. Basically what's happening is we've got an EMF going one way on this side of the coil and we've got an EMF going the same way on this side of the coil so essentially it's a dead short. Now what happens if we move the coil over to here you can see we have an EMF induced in the coil on the scope basically because this side of the coil is seeing an EMF going this way and this side of the coil is seeing an EMF going this way. So essentially each side adds to the total EMF on the, on the output. So I think it's very important to show that the magnets in the Floyd Sweet VTA were altered if Floyd was using standard Faraday law theory. Um, it's fairly important to understand this quite important concept. Um, this concept is fairly well known in the magnetics industry, but it's not, not really written anywhere. This is something that's sort of not really hush-hush, but it's something that's not really, really well known. So just to reiterate, the Floyd Sweet VTA, the magnets that were in the VTA must have been altered in some way um, to actually induce the standard Faraday's law um, EMF in a coil. Otherwise, the fields would have been too uniform and the fields would not have um, induced an EMF in the coil. For example, if we've got a uniform north field moving right across the magnet, right across the, the coil, if the magnet's over here and it, it's moving in, it will induce an EMF because this side of the coil has a, has a reduced um, EMF. But if, it, if the coil's directly on top, like I showed before, and it moves like that across the face of the magnet, there's nearly no EMF induced because it's a dead short. Whereas if we move it over here, we see an induced EMF.